Greetings and salutations to you all, ladies and gents. As always, I hope you are fantastic. My name is Kluger, and today I bring unto you another one of my Grim Dawn build guides. Today we are taking a look at the gunslinging sorceress, or sorcerer, depending on which gender you decide to go with <laughs> at the title screen of the game. Uh, this is a really, really, really fun build, I have to say. And more, I chose to do this build next for a guide because it's a lot more simplistic than my last few rather than being super complex in terms of uh, skill selection and skill, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, oh my god, synergy, skill synergy. <laughs> this is a lot more straight up in terms of its um, play style and overall damage dealing ways. It's a, a dual wielding gun build and for 80% of the time you were just firing your guns and watching mayhem ensue in front of you. Um, there's some really good augmentative skills if I can coin it. it might be a word I don't know if that's a word or not but some really handy skills mixed in to of course debuff enemies stun them confuse them and keep them away from you because it's a little bit on the squishy side um, but you should find if done correctly which is not too hard and that's really kind of the point of this build you should be able to deal really decent amounts of damage uh, pretty high levels of crit damage uh, while not ever being in too much of a pinch because enemies are either stunned fumbling, um, slowed, or dead. <laughs> That's really all there is to it. Um, it'll make much more sense once we get into the actual guide in of itself. Uh, so let's jump across and start getting into the nitty gritty. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the skill selection for this build up in here. We'll check out Demolitioners first, kind of slightly more the primary mastery, I guess, in this build. And let's step through it. I'll just go top down as is traditional. And for now, as you can see, we're mostly naked. I've taken off everything, giving us plus skills. Because I realize that'll actually give you a much better idea, rather than me guessing as to what's plus skill and what's not, as I have done in previous build guides. So, uh, Flame Touched, 11 out of 12, and would probably max that if I had one more point available. A uh, super really great skill, buffs all our main damage, well our main damage type plus lightning damage, and the offensive ability there is really, really nice too. The more offensive ability, the better here. And just one point in temper, it's kind of just a nice to have. You could put more points if you really felt like you had them spare. Uh, you know, a little bit of extra damage here and there. The armor value is kind of nice, but it's kind of just to have it. Uh, temper, sorry, that's temper. Blast shield, <laughs> I've got a 10 out of 12. Again, would probably max if you didn't have the plus skills, which I think I have to get that maxed. Uh, this is actually a super great skill. I think it can be underrated in terms of what it does, but you've only got to drop to 75% health for this to activate, which happens a lot more than you think. Uh, and look, it gives you, at max, I think it's a 50% chance to avoid projectiles, plus these all these resistances, plus to, all, uh, plus to max resistances. It's really, 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 really good once it activates. A great defensive skill. Now, the line known as Fire Strike <laughs> is maxed in Fire Strike, maxed in Explosive Strike. Only 4 out of 12 for me in Static Strike right now. I think with plus skills, it's going to 6 out of 12. We'll double check. I'll put the gear back on. And then 10 out of 12 right now for Brimstone, which again, you could max out. Uh, our main damage source uh, is really, really crispy. We get lots of uh, mainly fire and burn damage from it. From here, of course, we get some uh, a chance for lightning damage. And here, chaos damage gets added in as well in an AoE style, or I guess projectile, no, fragment style uh, of mana. And it, um, that actually adds up to a decent amount of damage, so pretty sweet. Uh, I've got one point in Canister Bomb just to get the modifier Concussive Bomb, which gives us a 100% chance to stun for 3 to 4 seconds. I don't use this heaps, but it's really nice to have if you've got a really large um, group of enemies you're dealing with. Just stun them all up and lay into them. <clears throat> and it really lends to the build in terms of uh, nearly like getting towards stun lock for some enemies. And we'll talk about that when we get to the devotion section of the build guide. But yeah, it's really, really cool. Awesome stuff. Uh, one point into each of Flashbang and Searing Light. A really good debuff overall. You could put more points in this if you really wanted to. I haven't really had them spare, <laughs> so I haven't put them, I haven't uh, cranked up either of these anymore. But it's still really good to have and carries uh, one of our devotion skills, Elemental Storm, which I will touch on again in the devotion section. And finally, Vindictive Flame. Currently got it 14 out of 16, but does. Um, 
tip over that with plus skills. This is a, just, again, a really nice handy overall skill. Mainly defensive, of course, giving us a uh, chance to stun enemies that get too close, health regen, but the total speed's also really handy, uh, helping us with our attack speed, as well as just getting around the battlefield, which is super nice. And one point in All's Wind's Wrath, it's kind of just there to have a little bit of extra AoE uh, harass on enemies, and it just, it does things. So over to Arcanist, I've got, oh dang it, I missed that, that's only one point. <laughs> Anyway, we've got one point in this Scandra's Elemental Exchange, one point in Overload. Uh, I'm mostly using this to get to Elemental Balance because right now it's giving me 22% extra crit damage, um, extra to uh, burn and electrocute. Frostburn, of course, is uh, pointless here, uh, but mostly for the crit damage is really nice. I will put one more point in there when I have it to max it out at 12 out of 12. Now, uh, yeah, this line, you could put, again, if you had the spare points, putting them into Escandras wouldn't be the worst because it gives uh, elemental damage, which we're kind of dealing a couple of those elements, so would be an extra DPS boost, but kind of meh. Again, if you have the points spare and you don't know where else to put them. Uh, it's actually one point in Mirror of Ariocdes, which is, of course, getting buffed up to uh, 3 out of 12 at the moment. Uh, just the panic button, as it were, you know, if you need to reflect all the damages coming at you, or rather absorb all the damages and reflect some of the damages, it's just nice to have there in case you're dying. Uh, 12 out of 12 on Maven's, or Myven's, I think it's Maven's Sphere of Protection. Just a really, really good uh, defensive skill. It absorbs a lot of damage, which means we can have a lot less HP, which this build, at least for me, doesn't have, possibly due to subpar gear. <laughs> but nevertheless, it is really nice to have and keeps you alive. And I've got one point in conversion. Again, I don't know wh what I'm wearing that's giving me this buff. Ah, it's this thing. Okay. So we're, all, we're almost completely naked now. Skills, please. Yeah, one point in conversion. Just, you know, it's nice to have. Uh, the reduced durations are cool. And the uh, energy absorbed from spells, you know, it's okay. But you don't really need more points than that. Than that, I feel. Now, one of the cornerstones, of course, from Arcanist is Inner Focus, a 10% offensive ability and 25% spirit, neither of which are something to be sneered at. One point in Arcane Will for the damage boost when uh, your health drops. This is kind of like a Blast Shield sort of vibe, because you only have to go to 70% health. Not a bad candidate for leftover skill points. Uh, and Nullification, one point. Again, also kind of nice, because it reduces... Uh, in its own words, where am I looking? Um, enemies caught within it, uh, they they get all their buffs get purged or eliminated, as it were. Plus uh, reduced elemental resistances. No, reduced target elemental damage. Pardon me, I'm getting that wrong, but you get the idea. Nullification is not a bad one pointer. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, so we'll gear back up. Yeah, that goes there. That goes there, and we'll talk about the gear, of course shortly in a future segment oh yeah so with all that equipped again uh this goes up to 12 out of four uh, sorry 14 out of 12 which is kind of near uh it doesn't really give you much more just the i think the total damage reduction and physical damage reduction just modify slightly but it's not really worth it conversion goes up to six out of 12 just by happenstance <laughs> and that's it for that one and then over in demolitionist Everything goes haywire. So, <laughs> Flame Touch goes up to 16. Uh, temper up to 6. Blast Shield gets maxed. All of the Fire Strike stuff is on overload, so to speak, except for Static Strike. Um, Ulzwe sorry, Vindictive Flame goes over to Ultimate Levels. And Flashbang and Searing Light also get extra juju. So there, there you go. It's... <laughs> There's quite a few skills being picked here, but it's all... It's nowhere near as confusing as it looks. Uh, for the most part, you're just shooting your guns and occasionally throwing extra jazz out there. Oh, right, while we're here, though, I'll mention uh, skills earned from gear. Uh, primarily, uh, we've got Ward of Illusion, which is coming from Shroud of Illusion, which I'm just using while, I've ha while I have. Uh, this isn't the best in slot for this build, but it's nice. Um, so I'm using that while I've got it, just so you guys know. Uh, but primarily, uh, Demon's Breath is another skill I'm using quite heavily in this build, and that comes from... Wait, these are the wrong, wrong way around. <laughs> Coming from uh, this uh, Devil Touch ammo. Yeah, comes from there. Uh, it's just sort of like a wave attack, which does uh, good 
damage from weapon, main hand damage as it's referred to, uh, as well as fire and chaos damage, and attack damage converted to health. And that's also carrying one of our devotion skills. So, super, super handy skill. I like it a lot. And that, and I'll just double check once more. Yeah, that's it. Everything else is just stock skills from the masteries. So, there you go. So, and we'll look at the character pane while we're here as well. As you can see, I've got a few attribute points spare. But I've done my old rough 3 to 1 ratio, if not a little bit more, leaning towards physique. Uh, so, 3 points in physique for every 1 point in spirit, approximately. Uh, but these days, the meta tends to be mostly, or if not entirely, going into physique. And... I guess that's all I really need to mention from here, isn't it? So, there you go. Let's carry on to the Devotion Skills selection. Okay, so here are the Devotions that I have selected for this build. I've got a few points left over that I'm yet to decide. Well, I haven't actually got them yet, but in terms of where to spend them. Uh, but let us carry on for now. I forgot, why have I got Raven? Oh, I know why. Anyway, <laughs> so in the crossroads, I've got Chaos, I've got Eldritch, good memory, and I've got Ascendant. So three points spent there. Possibly I could buy them out now, but I haven't double-checked. So we'll work our way down first. I've got Hawk uh, maxed out for the crit damage. It just gives you nice stuff, and I needed the Eldritch uh, goodness from it. Uh, I've also got Owl, which gives us good amounts of elemental damage across the board. Some resistances, less energy skill cost, um, and of course gives us a good deal of Ascendant Juju. <laughs> I've got, uh, is this, it's called Scholar's Light, yes indeed. Gives us good fire damage, some resistances, and then we've also got Empty Throne. Uh, again, just more Ascendant, gives us nice resistances though, so that's a really nice one to pick up. And now this is all leaning towards these two down here because I needed uh, a decent amount of Ascendant and Eldritch to get these two skills down here. So I do have Rowan's Crown maxed out, giving us really nice amounts of elemental damage and resistances across the board. Then the skill Elemental Storm, which I have bound to Flashbang at this point in time. I really, really like this. It deals a really hefty amount of damage, I feel. But the 30 reduced target's elemental resistances for 2 seconds is super duper handy because we're dealing lots of elemental damage, primarily fire. Uh, I had this actually bound to uh, Fire Strike for the longest time and you would just have these clouds popping up everywhere. It was really cool. Uh, but Flashbang's super spammy as well, so binding it to that has been totally fine by me. You still get at least a couple of elemental storm clouds popping up. Yeah, it's super nice debuff, and actually does pretty hefty amounts of damage. So that's really, really nice. And that was the first thing I worked towards, and that carried me through a lot of the game quite smoothly. Um, I'll talk about these two, and then we'll go over to Blind Sage. Um, I've put points in Raven, which is more of like a pet kind of build, but this gives me five... Uh, Eldritch points because I needed um, 18 to get to Blind Sage overall. It's not bad. 15% to all damage is nothing to really um, be disappointed with, as it were. Uh, but yeah, this is mostly a pet option. But nevertheless, I've picked it just to get the um, affinity. And then I've got Magi also maxed out. Fire and burn damage across the board. Um, resistances as well. More fire damage and gives us Fisher which is 15% chance on attack for Demon's Breath, which I mentioned to you just before. Now, I really like this skill. Again, doing decent damage, but has a 15% chance that's done for 1.5 seconds. And this kind of works like in a fragment style as well, where it erupts out from like a central core, like a mini volcano sort of thing. Um, it, stuns, it can stun quite often. And it also triggers often enough because uh, Demon's Breath, you can cast through a group of enemies um, and hit a whole bunch of them at once, almost ensuring that it does get cast. Uh, I think that's what I had on Flashbang before, uh, but I've, I've jigged around the skills because of Blind Sage, which I'll touch on in a moment. So yeah, we got stunned from there, bear that in mind. Now, I've also got Blind Sage, which is really nice, gives us elemental damage, crit damage in that central point, some lightning and electrocute damage, which is alright. This gives re uh, resistances as well, which is super cool. I haven't got this point here uh, because it gives cold and frostburn, which is pointless, and I don't need the cold resistance, but... Lastly, Elemental Seeker, which I've now got bound to Fire Strike. These little things are so cool. I haven't got the skill maxed out yet because I've only just recently got it. Uh, but I don't. I haven't really seen anyone else, anyone else using them. The skill really intrigued me. So, these look like... Have I got this thing? 
Come on, do I have the, the jar of awesome special goodness? The little elemental dude that I've got because of DLC goodness. Hang on. I'm sorry, this is such a derailment. Will I wisp in a jar? So you get these things, but they actually do stuff. This is just a cosmetic item because I was Kickstarter back up, but I'll get back on topic. That's what they look like. So basically every one and a half seconds they spawn because we're constantly shooting with fire strike, right? So we get stacks of these little dudes summoning. They live for five seconds. They have a skill called Burning Presence, which is a three meter radius attack doing 1.4k elemental damage right now. That'll probably get in the realm of 2k elemental damage once, once they are maxed out. And now elemental seekers scale um, with player damage bonuses. So all the plus elemental damage and all that sort of stuff that we're doing uh, is benefiting these elemental seekers as well. So they've also got a skill detonate, which in a three and a half meter radius at the moment is doing 2.3k, almost 2.4k elemental damage, um, and does stun for two uh, stun target for two seconds. So. Man, between that and Fisher and uh, Canister Bomb, we are stunning the living crap out of everything. Plus, Flashbang confusing enemies. It's wild. We're doing so... It's not quite stun lock, but lots of stuff. If everything goes off at once, a lot of stuff is getting stunned and getting nowhere near you. Not to mention these little dweebs are doing pretty decent damage. Like 1.4k damage in a 3 meter radius as they just fly around and they actually are active. They go and pursue enemies and they're... Uh, they're like kind of little harassers. <laughs> they're pretty annoying. Hopefully it comes across in the um, sort of uh, start and end footage that I put in the guide. But they get out there and they're really annoying. I really like them a lot. It, if you would like playing this hardcore and you wanted to be more survivable, as it were, you could probably reinvest these points somewhere else. But just for an overall super fun build, I really like this skill. So, sorry, this devotion. Uh, Constellation. There you go. Words, Kluger. Um, is this active? No, it's not. Okay. So the last thing I've got is Hydra, uh, requiring a ranged weapon. Um, it's just a nice overall thing. 15% to all damage from that node, plus elemental damage. Uh, more elemental damage? It's just good overall damage buff. Pierce damage is not so good for us, but it gives us extra Eldritch, so I completed the constellation. But yeah, 3% offensive ability from there as well, some slow resistance. It's a pretty dang handy thing, and it's not a super expensive uh, investment either. So I really like that one. I think that is all. With the remaining points, I wouldn't finish Blind Sage. Honestly, I haven't really decided where I would spend them. Uh, possibly on some more defensive stuff. I could, like, put a point in uh, the this baby order, and then one, two, three. No, I couldn't afford that, but I could get, like, Lion, maybe. Or I could put a point in there, and then get one of these dudes up here for the extra defensiveness. But that's up to you. I'll leave those remaining points up to your discretion if you get so far with this build. Okay, so let's check out the gear for this build, or at least my gear for the build. Um, I would definitely say this is not optimally geared right now, but the cool thing is, I'm not optimally geared, and I've pretty much cruised through all, uh, up to Ultimate Act 2 uh, without really any trouble at all. Um, so, despite not having the best gear, this build is going pretty dang well. I'm sure you could, if you were devoted enough, no pun intended, find even better, more suitable gear for this character. But look, it's pretty good. I don't want to undersell myself. It's decently geared, but it's not optimally geared. Uh, generally speaking, I'll preface this by saying, it's not the hardest in terms of the gear that you're looking for. Uh, offensively, of course, fire and burn damage is your main prerogative. Elemental damage sort of backs that up as well. That's totally fine to have on board. And in terms of damage types, uh, chaos damage and lightning damage, Probably more chaos damage out of the two is also nice if it crops up on some gear incidentally. You don't want to like replace a fire damage bit with the chaos damage bit, but if there's also chaos damage, that's pretty good. And fire and chaos you'll find a coupled quite a lot uh, throughout the worlds of Grim Dawn, so that's super duper handy. Um, additionally, or supplementary to that, I should say, uh, attack speed is really, really nice. The, fi the faster you shoot your guns, the more damage you do. So no complaints there, it's really handy to have. And also offensive ability, you want to crank that as much as you can because this is kind of like a crit damage focused build. Um, it's really delicious and buffing it up. Look, the more you crit, the more, uh, bloody hell, I can't remember the name of the skill. This baby over here, elemental balance. You're going to do high crit damage and overall your damage will be super high because you're critting more often, of course. So keeping an eye out for OA is super duper good. And that's really it. That, that's really the focus of what you're looking for. 
Defensively, it's the same sort of jazz. Um, try and crank up your health as much as you can because you're not going to get it much from either of the two masteries you've selected. Um, of course, defensive ability as best you can and all your resistances. It's really the same for all... De um, defensively, all builds are really the same. you just got to keep all that stuff up as best you can. Um, so yeah, do what you can in that regard. Uh, so we'll go through and I'll try to mention all the components that I've got invested as well. Um, we'll start with the weapons oh, from this weapon and we'll just work our, work our way around. My gosh. Um, and that's that thing. Okay, so I've got the Devil Tongue gun here, which is all fire and burn damage, some other nice stuff, plus skills. It's more of um, like an occultist slash demo uh, item, because it's got plus three, it allows witch fire, but it works really well here. Plus one to all skills and demolitionist is pretty dang nice. It's got a skill called Devil Spread, which activates on critical attack. You seeing the link there? Yeah, yeah which is really, really nice. Uh, it does three projectiles, it does a whole bunch of fire and chaos damage, plus main hand damage as well, um, plus 20% um, of attack damage converted to health, which you'll see triggering quite a lot, and that attack damage converted to health is pretty dang nice, I must say. I'm sorry, I'm just checking recording time. We're okay, so that's really good. I've got silver core bolts on there because of the um, plus to all damage and the reduced target's defensive ability, which is super duper nice. This ring, don't laugh, it's pretty crap. <laughs> it's just attack speed and mostly 6% uh, defensive ability. I'm just yet to find a better ring to suit this slot. So <laughs> I'm keeping it for the defensive ability because otherwise it absolutely it will pretty much plummet. We lose 100 uh, defensive ability there, so not good. Mm. I forgot to mention as well, I've got the augment there that gives us um, health and health regeneration. Uh, troll warp powder, I think, from the rovers. And I've got it on both guns to help with the lack of health with this build, so just keep that in mind. Um, and in both rings, I've got slotted uh, Mark of Illusions uh, for the elemental damage and defensive ability, primarily. The hat that I've got is a resistant incendiary cask of spell weaving. Pretty nice double up to have there. The uh, incendiary cask giving us fire damage. We've got a bunch of resistances on there too, which is super nice. And I've got a sanctified bone slotted in there as well. Um, necklace empowers a, La a Lazarus Ruby. Uh, a bunch of fire and burn damage. Plus, uh, plus to all skills and demolitionist, which is really nice. Fire resistance as well. Increases current fire resistance by 62%. That's kind of cool. I didn't even notice that. So a really good fiery thingamabob. <laughs> Seal of the Royal Crown I've got. Uh, giving us elemental damage. Uh, a lot of extra energy, which is actually quite handy. Uh, offensive ability and resistances. And yeah, like I said, Mark of Illusions in there. The other gun I've got running at the moment is Exterminus. Again, this is a chaos -y, so, so it's got occultist vibes about it, I suppose you would say. But it gives us flat chaos damage, a bunch of percentage damage to fire, chaos and burn. 11% uh, attack speed is nice. Plus 3 to Brimstone is really nice. And plus 2 to Explosive Strike is also really nice. Plus to Occultist, of course, is blah, but big deal. Uh, it's still a really nice gun. And the granted skill, Dark Flame, which is a 15% chance on attack to, uh, in a 6 meter radius, reduce uh, fire and chaos resistance to enemies by 20%. So, of course, super, super duper handy to have. And will basically cast every 4 seconds or so, because uh, we're constantly firing it. So, that's really sweet. Now, in this, I've got Devil Touched Ammo. Uh, which is a really good fire on chaos damage buff and also gives us the skill demon's breath Which I mentioned earlier. We've got bound to one of our devotion skills So it's really nice to have and demon's breath itself is a pretty nice skill. So uh, Yeah, there you go <laughs> uh, Going around we've got the elite outcasts burning pauldrons, which is by being revered with Kimon's chosen which I would highly recommend choosing for this build in terms of your uh, faction alignment it's a decent thing for fire and burn damage, some defensive ability, and plus two to vindictive flame. It's it's nice in... No, sorry, this is from the Outcast. What am I talking about? But you should still go Kamon's Chosen. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so it's a decent overall thing, but I haven't found better shoulders, unfortunately, so I'm sticking with these for now. And an anti-venom salve in there for uh, mainly the uh, poison and acid resistance. Wormbone handguards, uh, fire and lightning damage, really, really nice. Uh, health and offensive ability, really good. Elemental resistances, very nice. The plus skills, unfortunately, don't really pertain to us, but say la vie. 
and it's got a skill on there, Volcanic Worm's Breath, which is like a big wave attack, whoosh, which does a bunch of fire and lightning damage, and burn damage, and 20% of main hand damage. It's pretty cool. Uh, Golemborn Greaves seem to be pretty stock these days for most uh, high level builds. Um, they're pretty nice. Uh, health, movement speed, armor res increased armor resistance, or sorry, armor value, you know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, the plus skills up. Plus rate of temper is actually pertinent. Of course, men here's bulwark is not. But the skill Golemborn, which is 25% chance when hit, to activate and give us 300 more armor and some uh, retaliation stuff. But the 300 armor is really super nice. So it's pretty dang cool. And Mark of the Traveler on there, I'm primarily using for the health region and the movement speed. Badge Mark of Divinity, which I actually crafted. Uh, is really really nice for this build uh, health regen is really super handy in this case um, elemental resistances across the board with plus to maximum elemental resistances plus three to flame touched plus two to all's winch chosen it's pretty dang nice and gives us the skill divine light which activates it when our health gets low <laughs> less than 30 percent um, but restores 10 percent of health and 100 percent damage absorption for three seconds so good lifesaver there and i've got wardstone slotted in there mostly for the bleeding resistance because i was struggling to get that um leveled up as it were so that's what i've put in there um if you wanted to be super aggressive you could put like an attuned lodestone or something in there to really crank up your offensive um is it offensive ability no all damage so you could put something like that in there or like arcane lens or something can go in there i can't remember there's other stuff that can go in there which which can make you more offensively potent anyway whoo tinker's ingenuity uh which is just a really nice all-around belt again this is something i crafted um it's just a really nice overall survivability belt gives us a bunch of resistances um plus to max resistances um it's just good overall. Tinker's Ingenuity skills also really cool. Um, when our health gets below 40%, it uh, does a bunch of really nice stuff. Uh, increased damage absorption, plus 50% to all damage, and uh, blah, 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 blah. increases health and energy <laughs> regeneration by a lot. And I've got another anti venom salve in there to help with our poison and acid resistance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I've got a Marauder's Talisman over here. This is what's allowing us to dual wield guns. Um, it's really cool. It's a really good relic as well. Um, elemental damage, percent to all damage, percent to fire damage, extra health, extra attack speed, and it's got the volley skill, which is really super awesome. Now, the upgrade to this is Plunderer's Talisman, which is the mythical version of this, which is just the same but better. It's very expensive, so I haven't been able to craft it yet, but I will when I can. Uh, Fate Weaver Leggings. These are pretty good pants. Uh, I can't remember what I had in place of them. But these are pretty nice. They're arcanisty. They've got that kind of vibe about them. Extra elemental damage, offensive ability, movement speed, and plus, it's got some other good stuff there. I won't go into too much detail, but it's got plus to Maven's Sphere of Protection and Conversion, which is super cool. And it's got the skill Prismatic Barrier, which can trigger roughly every 45 seconds or so when hit. Um, when it activates, it just gives you almost every resistance increased by 50%, which is sweet. And on that, I've got a Silk Swatch for the Pierce and Bleeding Resistance. Whew. And last but not least, Shroud of Illusion. Uh, it's just pretty decent. Gives us increased elemental damage, health, offensive ability, and resistances. To, and as, as well as some plus skills, as you can see there. Uh, it gives us the Ward of Illusion skill, which gives us essentially extra defensive ability and an 8% chance to avoid projectiles, which is kind of cool. Um... I'm just using that skill incidentally. Like this probably isn't the best um, chest piece and these probably aren't the best pants for this build, um, but it's the best I've been able to find for the time being through all my grinding. Um, and Hallowed Ground is the component on there uh, for all the extra defensive ability and resistances. And I guess that is it for gear. Awesome. That was a lot of talking. Alrighty, so if we're talking about the progression of this character overall, it's actually not all that complicated. Um, being demolitionist focused, of course you want to jump into that tree first. Um, cranking as much points as you can into the mastery bar. Just work your way all the way up, more or less. Or you could stop at like the blast shield line if you wanted to work on Arcanus for a little while. But basically, cranking up as many points as you can into fire strike primarily. 
and the accompanying skills. So Fire Shrike and Explosive Strike, just focus on those first. Drop one point into Flashbang and Searing Light as you can. Um, of course, Vindictive Flame as well, worth dropping a few points in there. But you could really just crank as many points into Demolitionist as you wanted to, because there's so much investment there, so you can keep working your way up the board. Um, until you've probably got Fire Strike and even like Brimstone level up to a decent level. Got some points in Blast Shield and some points into Flame Touched and Temper uh, before jumping across to Arcanist. Uh, if you were feeling squishy though, you could just focus more on Fire Strike uh, and some points in Blast Shield before you go across to Arcanist to um, start investing in Maven's Sphere of Protection because that's a really nice skill to have. But yeah, you can basically spend as much time as you want in Demolitionist because once you've got Fire Strike really cranked up, and you've got like flame touched and blast shield up at a decent amount. You're pretty much going to cruise. It's um, early game won't be too difficult because fire strike will. Re it really does like sort of it gives you a lot early on. It's really handy straight out of the gate. So that is definitely worth investing in primarily uh, as a focus. And once you do hop across to Arcanist, uh, you can basically just level up through the bar, putting a point into in a focus at least each time you go up. Um, of course, Maven Sphere of Protection, dumping as many points into it as you can as early as possible is super good. Once you get into the Arcanist Tree, of course, um, which is probably quite a long ways off, probably like level 30 or 40 before you're really getting into the advanced portions of the Arcanist Tree. That's that's a real approximation. I don't know exactly where you'll end up because each one is, you know, each player will do this individually. It's not. You can be quite freeform with the way you level this up because, like I said, Fire Strike will just carry you so so smoothly. So don't stress too much. Get Fire Strike um, and get Fire Strike first. Get Flashbang early on. Get Vindictive Flame and some Blast Shield points, and then do whatever you want. You should be good to go. So playstyle wise, it's been relatively straightforward, as you can probably see demonstrated below my face right now. Um, you just shoot your guns a lot. I normally open up an exchange by throwing uh, Flashbang into the mobs first, hoping to trigger uh, Elemental Storm, um, and just spam that throughout the fight pretty much as it comes off cooldown, and of course interspersing that with um, as much firing of the guns as you can. Um, Demon's Breath, of course. You can kind of alternate between Flashbang and Demon's Breath as much as you can, because we want Demon's Breath to activate Fissure. And that's really all there is to it. I tend to not use Canister Bomb heaps, um, but it is quite... Obviously, it's very useful. So if you come across, like, quite a large group of enemies or a group of enemies plus a couple of heroes, uh, opening up with a Canister Bomb is super handy just to keep everything stunned, of course, and then you just lay into your normal uh, pattern of Flashbang, Demon's Breath, and firing lots of bullets. Uh, nullification, of course, is really handy to have on heroes and bosses, so throw that at them and then lay into them to debuff them slightly and make them easier to kill. And that's really all there is to it. It's a bit of a... It's a much more simple playstyle than the previous builds I've done, so it's really just a, a rinse and repeat process of throw out your other skills and then shoot your guns as much as you freaking can, and that's really all you need to do. Um, but you do want to be kiting a decent amount um, we haven't got the most health here. Defensively, we're not too bad, and we're debuffing our enemies too. But nevertheless, you don't have heaps of health. So if you've got a lot of enemies getting within close range of you, you'll want to scoot away. You should have enough movement speed to be able to run away and kite most enemies. So just get out of range and shoot them and just keep going, rinse and repeat. And of course, you've got Flashbang and Canister Bomb as stuns if you really need them to scare off enemies and make kiting a little bit easier. Um, yeah, which is kind of what they're for as well. And if you ever really get in a huge pinch, Mirror of Ariocties, just press that if you're really, really screwed, and it should save your life. But as we've discussed through this guide, you've got some decent skills on items as well that'll help you with not dying. And so that's it, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed this guide. I hope it will help you, and I hope you enjoy it if you decided to pursue it yourself. I know it's not the most complicated, but it's really, really super fun to play. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. Remember to leave likes down below if you were into this. Otherwise, leave a comment if you have any suggestions, thoughts, or questions. I'll be happy to help as best I can. And I hope to see you around the traps in the near future. So, my name is Kluger, and you have a great day.